Hey guys, welcome back again. So in this video, we'll be setting up our room database. That is, we'll be creating the entities, the data access objects and the database class. And for the database class, we'll be using the singleton pattern. So let's see what we have inside our application. So as you can see here that here we have a list of buttons and currently these buttons don't do anything. That is these are just dummy buttons. That is we would use these buttons to insert a single to do, get all to do's, delete a to do, update a to do and so on and so forth. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating a table called to do's which will contain a list of to do's. And if we go inside our main activity, here we can see that we have a empty on create method. And then we have a couple of methods here that are fired when we click on these buttons here. And inside the activity main.xml, we, here we also see that we only have those buttons which we have inside our application. So now to implement room database, firstly what we need to do, we need to declare our dependencies in the build.gradle file. So let's open this file here, that is the app level build.gradle file. And now let's go to this link here, I'll provide this link in the description below. So firstly let me copy these dependencies here and at the time of recording this video, the latest stable version of room is 2.2.1. So let's copy it from here. Let's go into Android Studio and let's go here inside the dependencies tab and let me paste the dependencies here and now let me click on sync now. So now the syncing is complete. So let's close this app level file here. That is the build.gradle file here. So now let's go to this tab here or to this folder here and let's create a new class that will contain our entity. So it will be a Java class. So let's create a new Java class and it will be called to do. And let's click on OK here. And firstly, what we want to do here is that we want to annotate this class with entity. So let's annotate it with entity like this. And in case you want to provide a table name, then you can provide a table name like that. And here the table name would be to do table like this. So the table, uh, so the table name inside our SQLite database would be this to do underscore table. So now let's create some properties of this class. So the first property would be the UID that is the unique identity of this to do object that is a single to do. So let's create that and it should be private. So private int UID and then we want to auto generate it and we want to assign this UID to be primary key. So let's annotate it with primary key. So add primary key like this and then we want it to be auto generated so let's pass that auto generated tag here and this should be true that is this uid should be automatically generated by this class and now we want to have two more fields that is the text of this to do and whether the to do is completed or not so let's create those properties so private is string and let's call it to do itself or the text of to do and now here let's annotate it with column info to provide a column name so at column info and here we can pass in the name that is the name of the column inside our table and name would be to do text that is that is the text of the to do and the third property would be this uh, private boolean completed whether the to do is completed or not and here we would again like to pass in a column info where we want to pass in the name of the column so column info and the name would be to do completed like this and now let's create a constructor of this class that is this entity class it's command n or control n on windows and let's create a constructor and for the constructor i would only like to select these these two properties that is the text and the completed because the uid should be automatically generated so i'm only selecting this text and completed and now let's click on ok here and now let's insert the setters and getters for this class. So again command n and the getter and setter and the getter and setter for all of the three fields like this. And now let's also implement the toString method for this class. So command n and then the toString method here like this. And now our to do entity class has been completed. So now let's create our data access object first. And after that, we'll be creating the database class. So now let's go here again and right click and new Java class. And this time we'll be creating an interface here. So let's select this interface thing here. And now the name of this interface would be to do DAO. So to do DAO and DAO basically means data access objects. And now let's click on OK here. 
and now this is our interface to do that is the to do DAO and we need to annotate it with DAO so add DAO so basically our DAO has been completed that is this interface has been completed so and as and when we go through this application we'll be implementing the different methods which we require to access our database but for now on let's simply create one method here and that is to insert a to do so void insert to do and this would take in one argument and this the and that is the to do itself so to do to do like this and now we need to annotate it with insert because we want to insert a new to do into our database so like this and this is how you create a method inside your interface that is a DAO interface so now let's create a to do room database class so let's go here right click new java class and let's give it a name that is to do room database so to do room database like this and we need this class to be abstract so let's click on abstract here and we need to pass in a super class here that is that means that this class should extend from room database so let's pass this that class here that is room database and now let's click on ok here so now here we have an abstract class that is our to do room database class and it ex extends from room database so two conditions are satisfied out of five that is this class is abstract and it extends from room database and now the third thing that is we need to annotate it with database that is the third thing so add database and here it will require the entities so entities would be to do dot class like this and then we need to pass in the version number and for now let's keep the version number to be one and now it should return an abstract methods that is the to do DAO. so let's return that so public abstract to do DAO and it should be called to do DAO so to do DAO like this and now we want to make this class singleton so let's make it singleton like this and if you don't know how to make a class singleton then you can follow my video that is linked above where you can find each and every detail as to how to create a singleton class and now for making this class singleton let's define a static volatile variable of this class here so private static volatile to do room database and this should be called instance like this and now there should be one method here that is the static method and it should be a to do room database and get instance and here we would like to pass in the context like this context and then we'll check if the instance is null so if instance equal equal to null then we would like to do something that is we want to create an instance of this class but since we are following a proper singleton pattern here we won't be initializing this instance right now here we will be making a double check here that is making our singleton thread safe and most of the tutorials what they do they initialize this instance right away here itself and that is not the correct way but here what you should do you should do it like this that is synchronized and here to do room database dot class and then again inside here we'll check that if instance equal equal to null then we want to create a new instance of this class so now instance would be equal to room dot database builder and here we would pass in the application context so context dot get application context and secondly the class itself that is to do room database dot class and thirdly the name of the database so let's call it db name or let's call it to do database and now we need to call build upon this dot build like this and now we need to return this instance from this thing here and now we can simply return instance and guys this is the proper way of making a singleton and again i am telling you guys that this is the proper way of making a singleton that is you are having a double check here that is this check here that is we are checking for instance to be null twice here and not only once and most of the tutorials on internet or on youtube you will see that they only check once here that if instance is equal to null and they right away initialize that instance there but that is not the proper way because 
If race conditions will occur between two threads, then you are going to have two instances and not a single instance. And that will defeat the whole purpose of singleton class. And basically this line here that is synchronized to do room database dot class will make your singleton to be thread safe. That is this instance would only be initialized once whether they are accessed from multiple threads. So now that's all about this class here. That is we have an instance of this to do room database here. And now let's go inside our main activity and now if we want to access that instance what we can do we can simply call this thing here that is to do room database dot get instance and here we need to pass in the context and for the context we can pass just simply this here and then we can access the to do DAO here like this and then we can simply insert to do here like this and then we can pass in the to do here itself but that is a part of the next video because directly we cannot use this thing here because we need to make this run on a background thread and not on the UI thread and if we run it like this then we are going to get an error here. So for this part we are going to cover this in the next video. So till then have a good time and if you have liked the video do hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel do subscribe to the channel and if you want you can support me on patreon.com I'll provide the link in the description below. So thank you bye bye tata take care and have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.